Hey, Russell B. here. And as some of y'all know, I was on psych drugs for 19 years, from ages 11 to 30. For the last five of those years, I was tapering off a psych drug cocktail. You kind of see it in the progression. I've been off all meds for eight years now, and full disclosure, I'm not their biggest fan. And that's not just because of the medications. Having some separation from myself and the mental health system has been pleasant. It's been refreshing to look at myself through my own, sometimes painfully pristine lenses, rather than through the lenses of people, professionals, who never seem to have any lens cleaner. Let's talk about your medication. So I'm not the biggest fan of psych drugs, psychiatry, and that's based on my nearly two decades of experience with both. But what I want to talk about in this video is, curiously enough, whether or not I ever found psych drugs to be helpful. Did I ever feel helped by them while taking them? And the answer to that question is yes. But there is an all-important asterisk. Notice it. Because that's something we'll get to in just a bit. Very important. According to Scientific American, one in six American adults take psychiatric drugs. Now that statistic comes from a study published in 2013, but it is surprisingly one of the most recent figures out there. And if anything, that number has likely increased since then. In fact, in that same article, a U.S. government report from 2011 is said to have found that one in 10 Americans were taking prescription drugs for, quote, problems with emotions, nerves, or mental health. So that is a notable increase in only a couple of years. And naturally, children weren't accounted for in either study because nobody ever thinks about the children. But if 16.7% of the adult population in this country alone in 2013 were taking side drugs, then surely some of them were getting something good from their experience, right? Otherwise, why on earth would anybody keep taking them? But seriously, while I was taking side drugs for 19 years, and typically a psych drug cocktail at that, it wasn't all bad. I sometimes felt some relief, or a lot of relief. I sometimes felt helped. Taking an antidepressant, for instance, when it worked, was revelatory. Life would go from dull, depressing black and white to vivid, saturating technicolor. And in just a matter of weeks, profound sadness no longer had me molecularly mingled with my bed. Kind of like those sailors who were fused to the hull of their ship in the fabled Philadelphia Experiment. For those who don't know, the Philadelphia Experiment was an event where a U.S. naval ship allegedly, in an attempt to turn itself invisible or travel through time or something science fiction-y, accomplished a tad bit more and managed to oops its way through multiple dimensions before finally reappearing in its original spot, with some of its sailors now blended with the ship's hull. Wonderful stuff. Hollywood's even taken a couple cracks at it. But it's real nightmare fuel. And anyway, I'm getting off topic. While taking a working antidepressant, many of the things that used to bother me simply didn't bother me anymore. Most of my worries simply vanished. And speaking of worries, I found benzos when they worked to be great for anxiety and for sleep. Antipsychotics when they worked, great for anxiety and unbelievably effective for sleep. And mood stabilizers? Well, they definitely stabilized my mood. ADD slash ADHD meds, the stimulants, also helpful. On meds like Concerta and Ritalin, I could think more clearly and with greater focus. And they gave me an improved sense of well-being. Until they started to wear off in the afternoon, then I'd get kind of edgy. And the smart drug, Provigil. Oh my god! When I took Provigil, I felt limitless. Provigil, which is the brand name of modafinil, is mainly used and has only been approved for treating various sleep disorders. It's a wakefulness-promoting agent. But that smart drug label comes from its reputation for enhancing the capabilities of your skull meat. 
And I can personally attest to that. I was cured when I took ProVigil. Now, cured of what? I don't know. But all repairs to my psyche and soul were at once complete and checked off the long list that is surely maintained on some grand ethereal plane. That was ProVigil. See, even all these years later, I get a positive ping in my guts when I think about how that medication made me feel. And I would imagine a lot of Wall Street brokers do too. This is Wall Street. Taking ProVigil on its own was life-changing. It set a bar, albeit an unnatural one, for just how good I could feel and how much separation I could put between myself and all of the things that bothered me. It was a restorative item of the highest order. It was a cure. And it lasted about two weeks. And that's where that earlier asterisk comes from. Those good feelings, those restful nights, those benefits of taking the medication when they were present never really lasted long enough to be anything close to fruitful. When the medications worked, they would stir up the motivation and the enthusiasm to do something meaningful, something lasting. Like, for instance, building a life for myself, which was hugely important since I spent so much of my 20s living as a shut-in getting a monthly disability check for mental health reasons, naturally, and rarely leaving the house. But by the time I could turn the motivation into action, the effectiveness of the medication had begun to wear off, and soon enough the reset button would be pressed on my progress. Those things that used to bother me started bothering me again. The worries would return. A general sense of unease would hang over me, and restlessness would try to swallow me from underneath. And bad feelings that had been suppressed by the meds would come roaring back like an angry lion that had busted free after having been locked inside a teeny tiny little trunk. And sleep. Sleep is something I never struggled with before taking side drugs. But after I started taking them, especially when I started taking antipsychotics when I was 15, sleep became a lasting struggle of epic proportions. Because from then on, I needed side drugs to sleep to fall asleep, to stay asleep, the whole thing. So in that sense, they were helpful. And when taking Seroquel, for instance, which can be a powerfully sedating antipsychotic, when I took it and it worked, I slept like a baby. Literally, I slept day and night. I got up only to feed and whine about things and play some video games before eventually taking my medication and going back to sleep. And that was my daily life cycle for years, especially for the first half of my 20s. And in my teens, while also on a psych drug cocktail, even though I was more functional than I would be in my 20s, I was still a sleepy, depressed, anxious, unmotivated version of myself who bared little resemblance to the unmedicated, preteen, mildly precocious youth who seemed to have a bright future ahead of him. And I bet many of you can relate to that. So instead of Russell B., I may as well have been Gary C., or Timothy P. Or Bobby B. The B stands for beefcake, apparently. Just pick a random first name and last initial. I was not myself. And the medications and their ultimate inability to be nothing more for me, at best, than the equivalent of a 40-yard dash runner who comes off the starting line a little sluggish, then picks up a lot of speed before inevitably tumbling head over heels and busting his backside played a big part in that. And that's really the story of psych drugs for me, the somewhat good part of it anyway. It was the story of quickly building up a tolerance to whatever drug I was taking, losing the good effects if there were any, while maintaining many of the side effects, then having to either up the dose or switch to a new drug in order to make the good effects come back. And thus, I would begin the cycle anew. And that went on for 14 years before I began my five-year taper one month before my 25th birthday. Then a new struggle began, of course, since that's where my dependency on the medications, which no one had ever told me was even a thing prior to that, reared its eldritch horror of a head. Kala Lu had nothing on that. I actually had to look that name up because I wasn't sure how it was correctly pronounced. And this is the best picture of Kala Lu out there. It's H.P. Lovecraft's own drawing of his creation. Looks kind of cute, honestly like a costumed actor in a very low-budget B-movie horror film, having a big sneeze. 
But I digress. In closing, because of tolerance and dependency and the managing of side effects, I did find side drugs to be helpful. But unfortunately, more often than not, they were helping me solve the problems they created. I took Provigil because of the ceaseless sedation caused by antipsychotics. It's a wakefulness-promoting agent. Overall, the medication so muddied the waters of who I was that it made it frighteningly easy for me to become a DSM label magnet. And these things are hard to get off. So of the many millions of people who have taken psych drugs, many have likely continued taking their medications for some of the same reasons I took them for so long. And they, maybe you, have found them to be helpful for reasons similar to my own. Not to mention, as those of us in this community know and have had to find out the hard way, there isn't much help and safe aid out there for folks wanting to come off their meds. And that includes from the prescribers who put us on them in the first place, which is another reason millions of people have likely continued taking their medications. After all, it could be argued that it's more helpful to stay on them if coming off them with little to no help from medical professionals can be so dangerous, even potentially fatal. And all of that, all of that, puts a huge asterisk next to the question of whether or not psych drugs are ultimately helpful for anyone, not just for me. But yeah, definitely for me.